2 Samuel 3, 17 through 21. Abner got the elders of Israel together and said, Only yesterday, it seems, you were looking for a way to make David your king. So do it, now, for God has given the go-ahead on David. By my servant David's hand, I'll save my people Israel from the oppression of the Philistines and all their other enemies. Abner took the Benjamites aside and spoke to them. Then he went to Hebron for a private talk with David, telling him everything that Israel in general and Benjamin in particular were planning to do. When Abner and the twenty men who were with him met with David in Hebron, David laid out a feast for them. Abner then said, I'm ready. Let me go now to rally everyone in Israel for my master the king. They'll make a treaty with you, authorizing you to rule them however you see fit. Abner was sent off with David's blessing. Second Samuel 5, 1 through 10 Before long all the tribes of Israel approached David in Hebron and said, Look at us, your own flesh and blood. In time past, when Saul was our king, you were the one who really ran the country. Even then God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you'll be the prince. All the leaders of Israel met with King David at Hebron, and the king made a treaty with them in the presence of God. And so they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he became king and ruled for forty years. In Hebron, he ruled Judah for seven and a half years. In Jerusalem, he ruled all Israel and Judah for thirty-three years. David and his men immediately set out for Jerusalem to take on the Jebusites who lived in that country. But they said, You might as well go home. Even the blind and the lame could keep you out. You can't get in here. They had convinced themselves that David couldn't break through. But David went right ahead and captured the fortress of Zion, known ever since as the city of David. That day David said, To get the best of these Jebusites, one must target the water system not to mention this so-called lame and blind bunch that David hates. In fact, he was so sick and tired of it, people coined the expression, no lame and blind allowed in the palace. David made the fortress city his home and named it City of David. He developed the city from the outside terraces inward David proceeded with a longer stride, a larger embrace, since the God of the angel armies was with him. First Chronicles 13, 6-14 David and all Israel went to Balah, kiriath Jerem, in Judah, to bring back the chest of God, the cherubim throne of God, where God's name is invoked. They moved the chest of God on a brand new cart from the house of Abinadab with Uzzah and Ahio in charge. In procession with the chest of God, David and all Israel worshipped exuberantly in song and dance with a marching band of all kinds of instruments. When they were at the threshing floor of Kadan, the oxen stumbled, and Yuza grabbed the chest to keep it from falling off. God erupted in anger against Yuza and killed him because he grabbed the chest. He died on the spot in the presence of God. David lost his temper, angry because God exploded against Yuza. The place is still called Perez Yuza meaning exploded Yuza. 
David was terrified of God that day. He said, How can I possibly continue this parade with the chest of God? So David called off the parade of the chest to the city of David. Instead, he stored it in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The chest of God was in storage in the house of Obed-Edom for three months. God blessed the family of Obed-Edom and everything around him.